Are you an educator looking for new ways to record lectures or perhaps start recording lectures? If you are, this video is for you. There are many ways of recording lectures. For example, I could speak to this camera for 10 minutes and call that a lecture. But more often than not, video lectures involve some sort of on-screen content. An easy way to use a slideshow in a video lecture is through voiceover, where the lecturer records their voice while they go through the slides. A slightly more advanced technique involves a video of the presenter, and this is often accomplished through picture-in-picture, -picture, where the video of the presenter is tucked into a corner of the presentation. One drawback of this method, at least according to some research, is it can divide learners' attention. And that makes sense because the video of the presenter is tucked in to this little box, which is visually separate from the rest of the slideshow. Is there a way to help the presenter escape that box and be with the slide content? About four years ago, I discovered a YouTube channel which does just that. Let's watch a clip. Okay. So to start off, I've got four, four images for you. So let's just have a look at them. One, two, three, four. Now, a uh, quick question. What do all of them have in common? Mm, well, I would be really surprised if you guessed this one here. Oh, they're full of lines. Huh? They're, they're full of lines. They're full of lines, and they're in a circle, and these are things. <laughs> but they're actually pictures of time stables. Hmm, that's interesting. If you'd like to watch the rest of that video, the link is in the description. That video is from the YouTube channel Mathologer. The gentleman presenting is Burkert Polster. He's a mathematician at Monash University. I really enjoy watching his videos for at least three reasons. First, the topics of his videos I find fascinating. Second, he has this tremendous energy and excitement in his presentations. You can tell he enjoys what he's doing, and that's a bit contagious. And then third, there's something special about his presentations. It's clear that he has escaped the picture-in-picture -picture box. He is in the same space as the content. Now, this can be done through the use of green screen and significant, considerable editing in post-production, but that's not what he's doing here. Something I noticed is that he uses a presenter to click through his slideshow, and he has a screen off to his right where he can monitor this video in real time and he can watch himself interact with the content. I needed to figure out how he does that because it seems an innovative and compelling way to create video lectures. And I did figure it out. I've been using it in a number of my classes. One of my classes, I created a lecture series on the scientific method. And in one of those videos, I talked about how scientists used observations about the behaviors of gases to create generalized theories about gases. Let's watch a clip from that video. To give an example of how descriptions can be generalized, let's stick with this topic of the behavior of gases. Imagine there's a steel box that's airtight, and in the middle is a divider. The divider is also airtight. On the left side is a gas. The red dots represent molecules of that gas. The right side is empty, it's a vacuum. What happens when the divider is removed? If you'd like to watch the rest of that video, the link is in the description. Watching this video, I think you noticed a couple things. One, I've really grown out my hair. The other is, it seems I've figured out the method they use on Mathologer. I call this the live composite measure. Now, I'm not a broadcast professional. I don't know if that's a technically accurate term, but what I've done is created a video composite of the slide content and the video of me, and I combine them in a way I can monitor it in real time. So from my perspective, it is a live composite video I am creating. How did I create this live composite video? Here's my perhaps overkill lecture recording setup. I have a bunch of screens, a camera, a bunch of lights. If you look closely at the camera, you'll see there's a teleprompter in front of it, and nestled in the teleprompter is my smartphone, which functions as a fourth screen. In addition to all of this, I have an audio mixer and a lapel microphone. Part of the reason I'm creating this video, or the main reason I'm creating this video, is to convince you to adopt this method. Setting up this studio took me about six months, and 
showing you this probably isn't a strong selling point, but you've probably figured out I am using the live composite technique to record this video, and I'm using a much simpler setup. I only have two screens and a webcam to create this. A lot of people have dual monitor setups and webcams, so this technique and this setup should be highly accessible. But even if you don't have a dual monitor setup, you can use your smartphone or a tablet to extend your display and effectively have a dual monitor setup. If you saw on the previous slide, I use my smartphone as an extended display. And I do that through a piece of software called Space Desk. It's a remote display adapter. What it does is it sends the video signal from my computer to my smartphone through my Wi-Fi network. And anybody can use that to use a smartphone or a tablet as an extended, extended display. It's important to have two screens for these live composite videos. Here's why. Let's look at this image. The screen on the left has a full HD, full screen slideshow. That display is captured in a piece of software called OBS Studio. OBS Studio is an open source and free to use software tool for doing things like video compositing. OBS Studio is shown in the screen on the right. And you can see what it's done is it's combined the full screen slideshow on the left screen with the webcam video of me. And it's done something else. It has made the background of the slideshow transparent. So I am visible behind the slideshow. That's something special OBS Studio does. So this setup doesn't require a lot of hardware. And once you've figured out the basics of OBS Studio, how to set this up, recording lectures becomes very simple. In fact, it's easy as one, two, three, uh, four. Easy as one, two, three, four. Now I wrote a poem about this. All you have to do is press record, present your slides, press stop, and then post online. That's a terrible poem. But it is indeed easy to record lectures. So hopefully I've sold you on this technique and hopefully you don't have any questions. Oh wait, what do students think? I mean, that is why we create these lectures. After all, we are creating content so students can learn and hopefully the students have an enjoyable experience doing so. I was involved in a research collaboration where we asked this very question. We did a couple experiments. In one of the experiments, we used students in my class on sustainability. I created a lecture about sustainable development, and I created three different versions of that lecture. I created a voiceover where I narrated the slides. I used my webcam to create a picture in picture. And then I used my overkill lecture recording studio to create the live composite video. My students watched these different lecture recording formats and then answered some questions where they evaluated them. For example, we asked them how easy it was to pay attention. This was on a scale of one to five. I've cut the five off the top so these bars would be really big. What you can see is my students rated the live composite lecture easier to pay attention to. We asked them about uh, instructor social presence. How present did they think I was when I was lecturing to them? Did they feel like I was speaking directly to them? They rated live composites as superior. They also said they enjoyed live composite videos more. And among different options for video lectures, they said they preferred the live composite videos the most. So not only can these videos be created with limited setup, not only are these videos extremely easy to record once you have the setup, but students prefer live composite videos. I'm not going to spend any time in this video telling you how to make your own live composite videos. I've created a how-to guide which should be popping up right here. If you'd like to learn how to use OBS Studio to make your own live composite videos, check that out. If it's not here, the link is in the description. Thanks for watching.